Ladies and gentlemen, famous grouse. When Matthew Logue III took over his family's 100-year-old grocery business in 1896, he also inherited uh, their 40-year-old whiskey blending side venture. In 1897, the Glogue family released the Grouse blended whiskey to the public. That whiskey would later be renamed the Famous Grouse. Now, the company stayed within the Glogue family until 1970 when it was sold to Highland Distillers. Under Highland Distillers, Famous Grouse expanded to become the best-selling blended whiskey in Scotland, right about uh, 1980, and I believe remains so to this day. Um, Highland Distillers was taken over by the Edrington Group in 1999. At that point, the Highland Distillers had uh, their hooks in about eight different distilleries. Today, the Edrington Group um, has Highland Park, Macallan, Glenrothes, Glen Turret, and half of the North British Grain Distillery. These three whiskeys are from the Highland Distillers period of Famous Grouse, which means they most likely have a very different recipe than the current version of Famous Grouse. The first thing I have to say about these three Famous Grouse minis is that they all have fantastic fill levels. Having these great fill levels will hopefully mean that less oxidation has occurred and the whiskey has been preserved well. Let's start with the more recent ones. The two minis have similar characteristics, but in a slightly different arrangement on the label. They both have this out of focus royal warrant from the queen right in the middle. They both measure alcohol and alcohol by volume as opposed to proof, and they both measure liquid volume by milliliters. So that puts them both in the 90s or later. They both have a laser code, one there and one there. Normally these laser codes would be for the 2000s. And one would look at this and say, well, one's from 2008 and one, from, one is from 2001. Problem with that is Famous Grouse changed its labels in 2005. So this bottle cannot be from 2008. My thought is that these are from the 90s because they both reference in parentheses proof on the label. And, and a lot of whiskey companies were still doing that in the early 90s when they shifted over to alcohol by volume away from proof. The likelihood is that one of these is from 1991 and the other is from 1998. Now let's look at the oldest of the three minis. Because it measures its alcohol by proof rather than ABV, that puts it 1989 or earlier. It also measures liquid volume by fractions of a pint. This practice ended in 1979. Because the tax stamp lists U.S. internal revenue and distilled spirits, that sets it 1976 or earlier. The final step of figuring out how old this is, it's 90 proof strength. One doesn't see Famous Grouse 90 proof very often. There are advertisements that were put in newspapers about the introduction of the 90 proof famous grouse between 1974 and 1975. The earliest this whiskey can be is 1974, and the latest is 1976. Mid-70s, 90 proof, 1991, 80 proof, 80 proof, bottled in 1998. Now I'm gonna go backwards, starting with the most recent one, letting the old one air out a little bit. Famous Grouse, bottled in 1998. It has the grandma's closet effect with the sort of mothball note. If your grandma also kept bottles of whiskey and sherry in her closet. And it's got a little bit of nutty sherry, orange lollipops and orange gumdrops. It really isn't gonna let go of that mothball note. Famous Grouse, bottled in 1991. It has some very simple vanilla, maybe a little caramel. It does have honey, pears, and apples, peaches, and apricots. In fact, those fruits are beginning to overwhelm the oak, which is nice. Famous Grouse 90 proof, bottled in the mid-70s. It's pretty malty. It's got 
musty dungeon notes. There is a significant sherry cask influence in here. It smells like good Macallan. Toffee, almond, mm, some dried cherries. There's also some baking spice notes like cloves and cinnamon. It's even beginning to get a bit of a curry powder note. And cumin, French oak spices, rye spices. 1998 bottling. The first things I notice is that the whiskey tastes like a whiskey label. Papery, cardboardy tissues, paper towels. There are a lot of wood products in here is what I'm trying to say. Dried grasses, the mothball note, a bit of alcohol heat. The bitterness has a little bit of sourness to it and that lingers the longest on the palate. It's starting to get a little bit of a ginger ale note and maybe it's the ginger ale, but it's beginning to remind me a little bit of cheap Canadian whiskey. The 1991 bottling. It's much more herbal than the 98. It even has a little bit of mint. It does feel a little grainy in a good way. Grainy more than oaky. Less heat than the 98. It's pleasant, but it could really use some of the nose's fruit notes. With time, this does pick up some vanilla and some caramel. The mid-70s bottling. What an interesting thing. It's really herbal and has a lot of the nose's spices. Curry and cumin. There's a little bit of tart lime laying underneath all those herbal and spicy notes. It does feel fuller at 90 proof than the 80 proof. It has a longer finish. It tastes like the way fabric and machine grease smell. It is utterly devoid of sweetness. To conclude, the 1998 Famous Grouse frankly does not appeal to my palate at all. Probably not even that great over ice. To me, it tastes different than the current Famous Grouse, but it isn't markedly better. The 1991 is the closest of the three to a crowd pleaser. The nose is the best part. The palate is okay, but uh, may do better with some water, some ice. The 1970s 90 proof it's got such a variety of flavor to it. All the savoriness and spiciness and herbalness and pepperiness. It's really fun for those of us who like adventurous whiskeys. Now, the 1970s Famous Grouse is darker than the other two. Papa. I think my time is up.